was evacuated for a suspect with a, you were, you were on to him, you were, I understand you were waiting for that DNA, but that two hour window could have turned, uh, could have been very different. So is there gonna be any look at not releasing a potential murder suspect back to his home like that? You know, the, there's a reason why uh, people from all across the United States come to Las Vegas to apply with our agents to become police officers and detectives and SWAT officers and all that, and it's because we have a very professional and effective way of how we safely take people into custody in these types of very dynamic situations, and that was proven yesterday. And then the second reason is we have a community that's very supportive, so I understand some people might be frustrated with the disruption, but uh, the way the operation worked, uh, the community was supportive of how we did it, and they were certainly supportive of the outcome because everyone is safe today. We certainly support you, but he was able to go into that home and sources say he inflicted self-harm on himself. Obviously, he was taken to the hospital. So something could have happened in that two-hour window. So what, what I'm just, I think we're all a little curious, when was that, dis, why was that decision not made when, when he, and he just walked back into the house? Yeah, just as I answered, sure, understood. As, as I answered before, we, we wanted to provide a medical attention, which we were successful in doing so, and then we also wanted to make sure that we were consulting with our district attorney's office and ensuring a solid uh, case to keep building evidence, and that's what we did successfully. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, at this time, as the sheriff pointed out, we, we, this is five days into the investigation. We had a lot of success early on because the sheriff enacted major case protocol, but there is still a lot of information to go through. Uh, or, you know, we, we gave the information that uh, we arrested the person for the murder, uh, but we will still go through everything and be able to analyze that a little bit further. Yes, ma'am. Sheriff, you said the murder of a journalist is especially troubling. Now is probably not the appropriate time to talk politics, but do you... So why are we talking politics then? Uh, no, I think this is probably the inappropriate venue to speculate on that or opine on that. Um, I think it's uh, it, it needs to be stated and noted that it is troublesome because it is a journalist and, and we expect journalism to be open and transparent and a watchdog for government. And when people take it upon themselves to create harm associated with that profession, I think it's very important that we put all eyes on and address the case appropriately, such as we did in this case with this expediency associated with it. Um, but let me provide some clarification on the question on uh, the individual returning to the house. So that's, that's dictated by the Constitution and the NRS and the ability for an individual to leave on their free will uh, until we attain enough evidence to rise to probable cause to effect an arrest. And that was the reason why that took place at that time. Sheriff, sure, also, did you have any personal involvement in the case beyond the special protocols that you initiated? Uh, no, ma'am, no, I did not. Can you explain, so after you had left the search warrant and then the one officer came back by himself, why, why did he come back by himself? What was, he, what was his intent at that point? Was he planning to arrest the suspect at that point, or why was he there by himself? I'm, I'm not familiar with that answer. Yeah. Just uh, very briefly, uh, so we uh, wanted to make sure we maintained open communication with Mr. Tellis. We wanted to make sure we had a safe resolution of this. So it was our strategy to make sure we were overt and provided any channels of communication to continue as we continue to build our case. But was it safe to have just one person there? Because a short time after that, you brought everybody in squad and armed. Well, I think it's an assumption. We don't, we don't uh, publicly talk about our tactics. And, and I assure you there was more than one person there. At this point, we have not recovered it. Uh, we continue to search for that, and that's why uh, uh, Captain uh, Corrin has alluded that we're continuing the investigation. We're still in short proximity of this, and obviously you know all the legwork uh, continues uh, for the police agency and investigative uh, functions on a case this complicated. And we have to ensure that we're dotting the I's and crossing the T's to ensure a successful prosecution. Was, was uh, Mr. Can, Tellez interviewed? Did he get a statement? And or was he represented by an attorney at that time? He was interviewed. Um, 
he was consensually interviewed, uh, voluntarily interviewed. Uh, he had the opportunity to obtain a, 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 an attorney. Uh, he chose not to, and since subsequent uh, termination of the interview, he was let go at that time. Yeah, absolutely. I think I'm glad you brought that up because they were instrumental in one in notifying us of the next of kin for Mr. Garman so that we could do those appropriate notifications of the family members before we made this public. And secondly, they were instrumental in providing us for information on his cases that he was working previously and currently that may lead to some leads associated with this case. And uh, Captain uh, Corrin alluded to other directions we were pursuing, because uh, we didn't know absolutely at this point if uh, TELUS was the involved suspect. Um, we had to look at different crimes committed in the neighborhood. We had to pursue every aspect, and the, the review journal of provided us some additional information on a previous case that we had worked and made public in the, uh, in information in the public space as to MO, dress, and I'm sure you're all familiar with that, um, and we had to run that to bed uh, as a result of the, R, R, the RJ, I'll use the RJ, uh, bringing it forward. I don't know. Uh, he's, still, he's currently or he's at Clark County Detention Center. Where the FBI is because of his position? I'm sorry? Did the FBI use it all for his arrest because he was a public official? No, um, we didn't feel the need to bring the FBI in as of yet. If it, it had gone across state line or rise to a different level of electronic evaluation, we would have very well much brought in the FBI. Sure, I, I'll answer one more question. You have a remarkable video of a man who identified as a suspect approaching the, the attack scene. Do you have video of the attack? We have some um, distorted video associated with the attack, and um, uh, we are in the process of clarifying that video as we speak. So. Captain, when did Tellus actually become a suspect, your prime suspect in this case? And, and, and you came, I assume you didn't know when you had the press conference and you were asking for help, but when you had that press conference a couple of days ago, was he already on your radar? So. This will be the last question. Part of uh, major case protocol is to look at all leads at the same time. So we had a lot of personnel investigating very early on. Tell us as a person of interest. Um, the exact time of when it becomes a primary suspect or secondary suspect is really irrelevant because we don't. When we overfocus on one area, we start losing evidence and losing other things. So uh, the reality is, very early on into the major case protocol, we were doing a lot of things simultaneously, and that's what gave us the success here. But I, I'm sorry, we just uh, we're, uh, um, unfortunately we got to wrap it up. But we will have more information should come out soon. We have a lot more facts on this case, so we, just give us some time. It's only been five days. Thank you, though. Appreciate it. Thank you all.